a focal practice reverses all the bad things we've talked about it draws a group of people together around some specific thing that matters that requires a kind of skill and mastery in order to be done and which brings the people out in their own uniqueness at their best I tell my students, you can't buy the meaning of life, you can't borrow it, and you can't manufacture it, you can only discover it. And then I inv invite them to uh, search their experiences and their hopes and aspirations for occasions where they are in a position to affirm four propositions. The first is, there's no place I would rather be. The second is, there's no one I'd rather be with. The third is, there's nothing I'd rather be doing. And the fourth is, this I will remember well. There are moments when I'm juggling, and they're my favorite moments, when I just get lost in what I'm doing. And when it happens to me on stage, I get to share that moment with my audience. I will juggle in a crowded bar, and I know it's working when people go silent, and everyone stops, and everyone looks, because they can't help it. And those are magic. Those are magic moments, and that's why I do it. With jazz, you know, you're able to interact with the stars of jazz. Somebody like Wynton Marsalis or Branford or Ray Brown, which was my teacher. You could just go up to them and say, hey, it's a community. And that community is what really uh, drew me to jazz music. There's those times when you'll get too inside and those jazz masters will be sitting in the audience. Those jazz legends will come out and like, hey, man, connect. You have to see and partly in watching this movie you're seeing how people can resist it. The community, a sawmill, a store, carpenter, and the owner. And now, just mostly Japan, the whole country, just the money. <laughs> just a sell, sell. That's not any kind of wood. If I would not be back here, how many African American restaurants you see? None. And if I had not stayed here all the time I did, the community would have gone down to nothing, to nothing. You stay in a community and you build it and you make it work. I have to do what I have to do. I had to go to that park this morning and cook these 20 gallons of gumbo before I go and serve it out there. And that's the fun thing about today. Look how many people you made happy just with a little cup of gumbo. Why is it that it's something so powerful about eating together? I mean, you know, we could all go and just take a quick hamburger and then talk. Yeah, sure, we could. But there's something about eating together, about experiencing together the, you know, really good taste of this, this meal, the experience of sipping the wine together but also it goes deeper than that I mean, humans need to eat to live so we are in a collective act we're sustaining life our life together Entonces, de la, decías que de la buena comida sale buen flamenco Sí, bueno, el, el buen flamenco sale de la no comida. De la no comida. De la no comida. Pero luego cuando hay comida... Pero cuando hay comida es suficiente motivo para hacer una fiesta. ¿Me entiendes? Eso es lo que tienen los gitanos, que no le hace falta mucho dinero para hacer una fiesta. Como se compra un melón y con un melón ya hay un motivo para hacer una fiesta.
centuries ago in the deserts of North Africa, people used to gather for these moonlight dances of sacred dance and music that would go on for hours and hours until dawn. And they were always magnificent because the dancers were professionals and they were terrific, right? But every once in a while, very rarely, something would happen and one of these performers would actually become transcendent. And it was like time would stop and the dancer would sort of step through some kind of portal and he wasn't doing anything different than he had ever done, you know, a thousand nights before, but everything would align and all of a sudden he would no longer appear to be merely human. You know, he would be like lit from within and lit from below and all like lit up on fire with divinity. And when this happened back then, people knew it for what it was, you know, they called it by its name. They would put their hands together and they would start to chant, Allah, 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 God. God, 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 that's God, you know? Um, curious historical footnote, um, when the Moors invaded southern Spain, they took this custom with them, and the pronunciation changed over the centuries from Allah, Allah, Allah to Ole, 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 which you still hear in bullfights and in flamenco dances in Spain when a performer has done something impossible and magic. Cuando yo me muera, quiero morir en triada, cerquita de la plazuela para escuchar la campana, y así se muere cuando... Skillful practices can focus. They can draw things together and become focal practices. It will depend on the particular people there. It will depend on the particular kind of music and the particular talent of the master musician and the particular instrument and the particular place and time. All of that gets expressed in the music itself. And by focusing things, I mean they focus different activities. Right, they draw different activities together, different the things you could be doing. So again, think about making music. The practice of making music depended on all kinds of other human activities and human practices. You'd have skills for playing the violin, and you'd have skills for creating a hall where music could be played, and you had skills for composing the music, and, and so on. And those all would come together on this moment when the music would be performed. Focal practices would also gather people, and they'd bring people together to focus on this one event. So the whole community, if they wanted to hear music, would come together, and, and they'd uh, be drawn together, and, and they'd focus on this moment of great mastery, when someone was, again, exhibiting this amazing feature of human life, that we can become skillful and disclosive and, and show the world in, in a way that most people aren't capable of doing. El flamenco para mí es, para ponerte un ejemplo que esté muy cerca, es como rezar, una forma de darle gracias a la vida. Shaving, flowing, it looks like a god, you know. You know, Kamisama made it, God made it, kind of a beautiful word. Make beauty, make more beauty, you know. And uh, God connected me, and uh, God connected the word, and God connected me. So I try to honor its best give to technique. Para mí, Dios no está ni en Roma, ni en la iglesia, ni muchísimo menos. Dios está en las cosas sencillas y en las difíciles sencilleces. And this is the way I would like everybody to come to the table, sometimes at their houses. Sit your people down to the table if they're gonna eat just ramen noodles. Sit them there and let them eat it and enjoy it. And you enjoy talking to one another and enjoy life, you know that. When we finally understand mastery and a responsiveness to the richness and the calling in the world, then we understand that the source of meaning in our lives isn't in us, that's the Cartesian tradition, and it isn't in some supreme being, but it's in our way of being in the world.
being in the world is a unified phenomenon. When people are at their best and most absorbed in doing a skillful thing, they lose themselves into their absorption and the distinction between the master and the world disappears. <laughs> Seeing what masters can do and seeing that we can do it too, that everybody can, in their way, bring out what's best in themselves and in the world, that we can re-experience what people called the sacred. Excellent. Excellent.